I got a question to ask y'all before I forget about it. Uh, it just popped in my yeah. mind. And this is off the subject of the yeah. Tokars or the yeah. or the, the club Phoenix itself. Say it. In the early 90s, late, late 80s, early 90s, they just had this thing called the Miami Boys. It was supposed to be a big thing up here in Atlanta. They had supposed to had, you know, and I was, like I said, a little jit at the time. Had mm-hmm. supposedly came up here, took over all the projects. Dixie Hill, Perry Home, this and that. My question was, what's that? Made up, no, or was that real? <laughs> and if real. so, like, what was that? Was that an entity? Was that the a cartel that was doing that? Because you, it was a lot of murders and stuff behind that. Yeah. Was that real? It was real. That's the truth. See, I thought it was a bunch of Georgia boys. No, you know, faking. No, no, no. That's the truth. So did they come because of guys like you that, that, that showed them so much money nationally? How did they, how did? Well, you know, Miami was the hub back then. Mm. So niggas were getting, and I say niggas, don't, don't, don't take it offensive. Oh, no, no, no. we don't but, care. But, but niggas, niggas was getting <laughs> dope cheap down there because they were down there with the Colombians and, and all that. Right. The Colombians back then were the go-to guys. It wasn't the Mexicans. It was the Colombians. Colombians at the time, okay. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The Colombians would come up that up that coast, ocean, or however you want to put yeah. it, come through the Bahamas and all that shit, and the hub was Miami. So they get the shit dope cheap, uh, I mean, dirt cheap. Mm-hmm. They come up here and cook their shit up and sell cookies <laughs> and, and, and sacks. Big as a motherfucker. <laughs> right, right, so right. they take over. Right. So it was, Damn. again, it comes to a territorial thing. So Atlanta, how you just going to come in Atlanta and take over? And this is our shit. Right. Mm. Right. So, yeah, that's that's the truth. And I give the respect. May he rest in peace. And I'm going to... I want y'all to try to tell me what rapper from Atlanta do you think really live the street life and rapped about it from Atlanta? You got to tell me, Dre. You got to tell me. You in the music. (laughs) <laughs> I, I, I mean, by the time I came right on that last little wave where everybody had done fell off. I said, so, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Who has passed that was really... Bankroll Fresh, that's the last... Shawty Low. Shawty oh, Damn Low. Don't think, oh. See, my mind is back in the... I'm yeah, thinking he's talking about... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Low, 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 low old enough, though. Low old enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Carlos, what... Carlos. Rest in peace, Low, man. That's the nigga that rapped and actually lived that life. My God. Wow. Mr. Bankhead himself. Mm. And I know this personally. Whew. My God. I mean, that was a good ass question though, Wick, because yeah. that's a story in itself. Good questions. Oh, that, yeah. I mean, not because that's a good ass story about that Miami yeah. shit. Because I have been hearing about that, mm-hmm. just those legendary wars that go on in the city mm-hmm. that are not really documented like that. But do folks you, do know do, what the hell. Do you know what really turned Atlanta out? What? Hurricane Katrina. Now I was here for that one. Mm-hmm. I remember yeah. that one. That's when all the robbing and man, you know. When I first started in the streets, yeah, I yeah, of course, did I ride strap? Yes, but we didn't have to worry about robbing. Yeah, you worry about a motherfucker running off with your money. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you don't worry about no nigga robbing you. Yeah, all that shit happened when Hurricane Katrina hit. Yeah, and the motherfucker migrated to Atlanta. Mm. Even the Detroit dudes. Yeah, they were strapped, but they did good business. business. They did good business. If you got to go to a business with a pistol, why even do it? But now if you're doing business, you got to be strapped all the time because you don't know what's on a nigga mind. Mm, yeah. 
That's why you got all these, oh, drug deal going bad. Why? That money ain't going to take you no motherfucking well. 20000 how long would $20,000 last you? A week. Thank you. A week. Is it worth somebody's life for twenty grand? Right. No. If a nigga for, run for off with your money. That, people that come from nothing, that seems like a lot of money to them. It do, and but. I, I have to remember that a lot of times when I see like these young kids on there and be like, man, why they ran up in that gas station? And, and they, you know, they knew they weren't going to get the $500, but you got, man, you got guys out here, man, they ain't, ain't made $500 in a year. I, I agree. But is that worth the rest of your life? Oh, absolutely not. Is that worth somebody else's life and the rest of your life? Absolutely Because your ass on camera, mm-hmm. for one. Mm-hmm. That $500 is going to get you a meal a day. Mm-hmm. And nine times out of ten, when they go raw, get where they're going to go. Either they're going to go buy some dope, mm-hmm. pop them pills, drink that lean, or go to the strip club. And they broke the next day. So now they got yep. to think about what I'm going to do tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Got to do it but again. Got to do it again. Up. But most of the people, and I say this too, are living for the minute, not the hour. You're right. See, yeah. you know, as we don't see money and 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 got reputations out here, everything that we do is for tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. People that they don't they living for right now. That's why I say. That's why I say. You know, uh, I want this life story to be more educational than glorified. That's Absolutely. Right. Because it's a lot of shit that come with that lifestyle. And it ain't cool to go out and hurt our brothers for money. 